Hello and welcome to NPTEL MOOC on Electromagnetic Waves in Guided and Wireless Media. We were discussing the two-ray model of simple wireless propagation, well I should say the simple two-ray model of wireless propagation of electromagnetic waves and uh, we arrived at a very interesting point where we had electric field from the direct path as well as electric field from the non-direct path expressions for these two and we had just begun to combine them and I hope you remember this particular picture which was the two-ray model picture that we were taking and then I told you that because the angle theta that comes you know that, that would be here uh, denoted here are essentially equal then their cosines are also equal which allows you to express this horizontal distance d prime in terms of the range r as well as h1 and h2 right. Similarly you have d double prime. So obviously d1 if you now look at what is d1, d1 will be given by this triangle ok. So, I will mark the triangle here. So, this is the triangle that you would actually use to express I mean obtain an expression for d1 and you can use uh, this triangle with d1 as the hypotenuse d prime and h1 as the two sides of the you know uh, of the triangle. So, d1 will be equal to square root of d prime square which is the horizontal distance plus h1 square. You can similarly show that d2 you know from this triangle that I have that I can write d2 as square root of d double prime square plus h2 square ok. And then you can substitute for d prime here and you can substitute for d double prime into these expressions and then simplify the two expressions. Uh, I will leave this as an exercise for you to do this would be d1 plus d2 is equal to square root of r square plus um, h1 plus h2 whole square ok. Because when you add them up this h1 by h1 plus h2 and the other thing will actually be removed from that ok. So, you can actually express all this in terms of d1 and d2 uh, as the sum of this indirect path propagation as a simple formula here. Now, you also need to relate d h2 and h1 and that relationship can be obtained by simply projecting or you know right drawing a line from h2 onto the base station antenna tower right. So, this will intersect so this height is h2 obviously this height will be h1 minus h2. Now, you look at a triangle that is this one ok and then write d as square root of r square because the line length is about r and uh, so this d will be equal to r square plus h1 minus h2 whole square ok. So, this is d1 plus d2 and this is d. These expressions are important in the sense that you are going to combine these two expressions in order to obtain what is delta d. Remember delta d is the path difference between direct and indirect path. So, you have d1 plus d2 minus d as delta d ok. Now, because d1 plus d2 we had already written here. So, one second. So, we have already written d1 plus d2 here and uh, you can then show that this would be. Um, so, you can add them d1 plus d2 minus d will be square root of r square plus h1 plus h2 whole square minus square root of r square plus h1 minus h2 whole square ok. You can check my calculations whether I have done this expressions for d1 and d prime correctly. So, if I have done that one then this is all right. So, you can show that these expressions are fine and once you have these expressions with you then you can simplify this ok. What simplification you can do is to take this d1 plus d2 expression I am going to erase this you know picture here. I hope you have noted down the picture you have recreated the picture on your notebook so that you do not have to rely on my pictures here. So, what I am going to assume is that r is much larger than h1 plus h2. We have already made this assumption because we have individually asked for r to be much much higher or larger than h1 and h2. We are now also going to say that r is much larger than h1 plus h2. So, which allows you to remove this r and then write this as square root of 1 plus h1 plus h2 square divided by r square 
which you can further approximate using binomial theorem as 1 plus h 1 h 2 square divided by 2 r square. Okay. So, this is what you are going to get. Next you have r into square root of sorry you have this term which is r square plus h 1 minus h 2 square. So, following the same ideas here you can write this as 1 plus h 2 minus h I mean h 1 minus h 2 square divided by r square employ binomial theorem again to write this as 1 plus so h 1 minus h 2 square divided by 2 r square. Okay. And delta d is basically the difference between this expression and this expression clearly r will cancel or rather 1 and 1 will cancel from each of these expressions and you pull r into it. So, that this r in the denominator will become instead of r square it will become r. So, this delta d will be given by h 1 plus h 2 square divided by 2 r plus h 1 minus h 2 square divided by 2 r. You can you know use your usual a plus b whole square formulas and find this thing out that it would be 4 h 1 h 2 divided by 2 r which is basically um, you know 2 h 1 h 2 divided by r. Okay. So, this is the expression that you are going to get. So, d 1 plus d 2 and we wrote d as this thing. So, in, in here what we have actually done is to write an expression for delta d which you can push uh, into the expressions for the electric field and then obtain the uh, simplification there. But then we still have to leave with one additional uh, factor here which is basically d by d 1 plus d 2. Okay. So, because we do not have that relationship we did not develop it again that is not too difficult to develop from that one. So, you ha already have d 1 in this particular expression. So, d 1 plus d 2 is square root of r square plus h 1 plus h 2 square okay. and in place of r square you can write d square minus h 1 minus h 2 whole square. So, we will come back to this approximation shortly okay this approximation shortly but we also need because of the electric field that we have written in the previous module we have this term d by d1 plus d2 we need that ratio so i'm only i'm going to look at that ratio by substituting for r square into this expression so substitute r square into this expression and then write okay so i'm going to write another expression here sorry for all this math, but you can recreate all of this math. This is just some simple trigonometry and some algebra that we are putting in. So, d 1 plus d 2 onto the left hand side will be equal to square root of r is basically d square, then you have h 1 plus h 2 square minus h 1 minus h 2 square. Okay. So, clearly you can simplify this further this h 1 plus h 2 square minus h 1 minus h 2 square we have already written. In this case delta d that we had written I should have put in a minus sign. So, otherwise they would not really add up I will not get the correct sign. So, sorry about that, but in here you can see that this approximation that is a plus b whole square minus a minus b whole square is essentially the same approximation that we have already or rather same expression that we have already written that would be 4 h 1 h 2. Okay. Now, I can take d as a common factor out and then have 1 plus 4 h 1 h 2 divided by d square which again I will rewrite using binomial expression as d 1 plus d 2 onto the left hand side d into 1 plus 4 h 1 h 2 divided by d square divided by 2. Okay. So, this is approximately well this is not approximate this one was the approximate thing. So, this is ex, this is equal to d into 1 plus 2 h 1 h 2 divided by d square. Okay. So, we get an expression for d 1 plus d 2 we also have an expression for delta d the expression for delta d will have the horizontal distance r which is what the meaningful distance for us right. Why? Because imagine that there is a base station antenna up here okay? and then you have you know this is a this is an actual you call this is an actual uh, uh, environment that you have. So, maybe there is a building here then there is a tree here there is another tree here then there is a building and let us say this is the path in which the vehicle is moving. So, let say this is the path the vehicle has moved. So, what we are of course, interested is to find out how the received signal would vary at each of these paths, but we are also interested because it is very difficult to navigate and find out every point what would be the electric field. We are most often interested in this horizontal distance which will tell us 
as I am away from this base station with a certain range r, what is my received power? Okay. So, this is the true path, the black one that we have written is the true path and that is what we should have used in the evaluation. But in many cases because of the problems, you know you have to use the traffic, I mean there is traffic going on, you have to isolate the traffic, all those things are not going to happen, people will not stop their cars or stop their scooters and let you do all the measurements right? unless the government mandates it. So, it is not possible for you to think of the true path and then look at the electric field at every path right? rather you will use some kind of a uh, you know do some experiments, but then you are also interested in simplifying your uh, assumptions or rather simplifying your scenario and one such simplification is to simply calculate the distance from the base station antenna and that is what this expression will tell you 2 h1 by h2 by r is the path length difference delta d which goes into the expressions um, later on right. So, this expression will come will come back to it, but right now we have a nice uh, interesting exp you know expression which relates d1 plus d2 and d. So, in fact you can write the ratio d by d1 plus d2 uh, as 1 plus 2 h1 h2 divided by d square. Okay. So, you can write this and then you have 1 minus 1 plus 2 h1 h2 divided by d square and then you have e power minus j delta so rather b delta d. Right. So, now delta d is basically d1 plus d2 minus d and that is going to be uh, as we have already written 2 h1 h2 divided by d square. Okay. So, why this relationship? Because we are going to assume that you know these are kind of similar quantities. So, r will be approximately d and uh, you know d1 plus d2 is approximately in the order of d. So, all these approximations will eventually tell us that you can use you know you can use these expressions and uh, you can then again assume in the amplitude part that this component 2 h1 h2 by d square can be neglected. So, that you can rewrite this as 1 minus e power minus j 2 beta h1 h2 divided by d square to the magnitude square. Okay. Granted we have made lot of assumptions here, but as our goal was to kind of find out an expression if you do not want to make these assumptions, you do not have to make these assumptions. You can go back, the equations are valid, the expressions are valid with those approximations that we have already made. right? But if you do not want to make further approximations, fine, you do not have to make. You can use a numerical package such as MATLAB or something to just plot the received power as a function of the distance d and then show what would be the functional dependence of the power on d. right? But for now, we will write down this. So, this fellow can be written as because it is a 1 minus e power minus something, you can show that this is essentially going to be sin square of beta h1 h2 divided by d square. And because this h1 h2 into beta is assumed to be quite small compared to d square, you can further approximate this as beta square h1 square h2 square divided by d power 4. Somewhere I probably made a mistake. So, when I took the square root, I think I did not take the square root properly. So, this should have been d, this should have been d rather than d square. Oh, because there was a d on the top. You revise this as I am this expression. So, this should be d not exactly d square. Okay. So, sorry about that. Again, this would be d square. So, this is all right. So, this is not d square, this is all just d. Okay. So, I am sorry about this uh, small confusion in the uh, binomial thing I kind of hurried up here. So, I did not look at this correctly. So, you get beta square h1 square by h2 square divided by d square as the term that is proportional to this. So, please remember that while the electric field is proportional to this, right? there is also an e power minus j beta d by d factor that we had already pulled out as a common thing. right? So, with that already taken out as a common thing, you will have to reinsert the magnitude square of it, which luckily will simply be 1 over d square. Okay? And then when you stick p t g t g r onto the expression here in addition to the electric field, this would also be the thing. Then you will actually get uh, this one as beta square h1 square h2 square divided by d to the power 4. Okay. So, this is the origin of a d to the power 4 dependence of the electric field and this would actually happen uh, in the assumption that 
uh, we have made in terms of H1 and H2. So, we had this 2 H1 by H2 by R and we neglected this 2 H1 H2 by R or 2 H1 H2 by D both are essentially of the same order. We neglected this, we said that this is much much less than 1. So, which actually means that R must be much much higher than or larger than 2 H1 H2 and the value at which R is equal to RB which is 2 H1 H2 we neglected the phase here. So, we include the phase part here. So, we said 2 beta H1 H2 by R is much much less than 1. So, which actually implies that R is much larger than 2 H1 H2 beta and we know that beta is basically 2 pi by lambda. So, this actually becomes 4 H1 H2 by lambda. Okay. So, for the value of R at which 4 H1 H2 by lambda and beyond right then the propagation will be of 1 by d4, but for r that is horizontal distance less than this capital Rb, the propagation will actually be 1 over d square as you can show uh, by you know, the appropriate expressions. Okay. So, it seems that the received power is not going as a single exponent, right? so there is some value r equal to Rb. Okay, this is the horizontal distance r that I am plotting. So, this Rb is called as the break point of the you know slopes and if you look at the average received power or the power received you will see that this was going in at a slope of 20 db per decade you know or, a or an exponent of 2 whereas right after this break point or approximately after this break point the slope would actually go as minus 40 db per decade that is the path loss exponent has become 4 here whereas the path loss exponent was just 2 in the power calculations for the range which is below the break point. In practice it turns out amazingly that it will not even be minus 20 because of all the other uh, you know because of the finite conductivity of the earth that we have so far neglected okay, finite conductivity. right? So, finite conductivity causes this slope to actually change over slightly to minus 30 dB per decade okay. and from there on you will have minus 40 dB per decade. So, you have a slightly sharper fall off even in the range for less than break point it would not be the freeze 20 dB formula or freeze path loss exponent of 2 simply because of the fact that we cannot consider the earth to be a perfect electric conductor. There is always some amount of finite conductivity or lossy material that one needs to consider. Okay. So, to sum up you have before this range either 20 dB per decade or minus 20 dB per decade as per you know the conductivity of the earth, but more realistically this is about minus 30 dB per decade and beyond this break point one can well approximate the loss as minus 40 dB per decade or rather the received power as minus 40 dB per decade. Decade means you change from say 1 kilometer to 10 kilometer or from 1 meter to 10 meters. Okay. So, that is 10 fold change in the R value that you are looking at. So, this is your received power. Now, if you actually look at the experimental data okay, of people who have measured this you know received power, you actually do not find. So, you expected here in this particular manner. Unfortunately, the data that you get you can show that there is going to be a large variation here. So, the actual measurement point will show that the overall you know the actual received power will have in addition to this straight line you know path which would be an empirical fit there would also be variations around it. Okay. So, the power actually varies around this one okay. and then there are these small scale variations which actually come up when you zoom in closely you will see the small scale variations come up everywhere. Okay. So, the green path is the straight path loss or what is called as average path loss which goes as 1 over d cube or 1 over d4 depending on what the conductivity as we have talked about. So, this is the best empirical fit that we have and in the long range approximation the power actually goes as 1 over d cube or 1 over d4 is called as a long term or long range power and this power is what is you know the what will give us the average power. Okay. But there are power variations around it and these come from the obstacles that are actually present which we have not considered. For example, in the case of the Toure model that we considered you had H1 here and then you had H2, we said that it was reflected right off from the earth, right? but it need not be the case. Suppose there is a small obstacle, maybe there is a road hump okay, 
light would also be reflected or electromagnetic waves would also be reflected from that hump. Now, we have not accounted for this obstacle, maybe it is not just one, this one there would be multiple heights, okay. there would be some additional humps and then there could be road uh, you know cavings or there could be buildings, there could be trees. So, you have lots of different varieties where the, where the electromagnetic waves could get scattered and arrive at the receiver and one such effect is this shadowing effect that we have talked about, I mean that we are talking about. So, this is called as the shadow effect. Okay. To put it simply, imagine that this is where you have you know transmit antenna, but right of the transmit antenna let us say there is a building here. Okay. So, this is the building that is present and this is where your receive antenna is. So, in fact, there seems to be no direct path to this at all and this is correct. There could be reflected paths, there could be additional uh, reflections that can come off, these are multiple paths that are possible, but there is also this path which has to go through the building. Now, EM waves will, what they will do when they encounter the building is that they try to diffract from the building. Okay. So, this uh, height may be we wrote it too high, but then light, I mean the rays will try to bend around and there would actually be a non line of sight path that is possible. Okay. So, this, this, this kind of effect which comes from tall buildings or wide buildings or trees or some leaves behind the trees, I mean so many of man made obstacles uh, will actually cause the local power to fluctuate from it. However, this local fluctuations is also of the order not quite small radius. I mean if you, you, you it is not of the order of wavelength, it is uh, order of wavelength, I mean it is of the order much, much longer than wavelengths. Okay. So, you have an average pa power, on top of the average power the power will actually fluctuate because of these buildings which can dynamically come in between trees and other kind of man made obstacles and they will you know be called as the shadow effect. Sometimes this can also be because the mobile user himself or herself will go around the you know the building and therefore, electromagnetic waves would not directly be able to reach it. Okay. So, this is the shadow effect. Unfortunately, to completely include the shadow effect, you need to know a lot more about this particular phenomena called as diffraction, which is what we are going to consider in the next module okay, to complete this shadow effect analysis. But the effect because of this multiple rays which I have written, you know some rays coming directly, but some rays being you know uh, reflected off from various obstacles, some rays being scattered by the building. These effects are included under what is called as multiple path or simply multi path effect. Okay. So, this would be or this would be multi path effect which will show variations of the order of wavelength. So, you can just move about corresponding to say 900 megahertz, what is the corresponding wavelength you can calculate and over that wavelength or couple of wavelengths if you move, then the received signal power could actually fluctuate from that. Okay. And what is meant by fluctuation means the received power could actually go down usually and this multi path will lead to what is called as fading of the signal. So, the term fading simply indicates that the signal amplitude is kind of reducing and uh, the amount of reduction as well as the rate at which the power is reducing. So, for example, you may be carrying your phone and then walking along, at some point the reception is bad meaning that fading is very high there, but as you move away slightly you know some wavelengths away the reception could suddenly be better okay? and or in other direction it could be better. So, this rate at which you are going to have your poor reception then come back to the good reception then again back to the poor reception. This phenomenon is called as fading and then the rate at which this happens is called as fade rate. Okay. You can see that this is not only because of the multiple paths, this multiple paths could also be dynamically induced meaning that you know you may decide as you are moving, you may decide to go in a certain direction with a different velocity and suddenly your theta and phi coordinates are different okay. and because they are different there could and the you know the obstacles uh, diffracted waves could also be in the different orientation, sometimes they may add up, sometimes may they destroy each other. So, you will get power fluctuations of that particular order. So, remember there are three different mechanisms wherein you are going to get power changes or power losses. One is the long term variation or the long range variation which comes you know because of the path loss, this is the average power that you would receive. And then there is this shadowing effect which is also larger order, but not to that order as the uh, path loss, average path loss thing. And then there are these minor variations or the fading which occurs because of this multiple paths. Okay. Technically, we assume that each path 
is independent, each path has a certain amplitude and a phase okay, and we give certain probability distributions based on measurements and based on some theoretical simplifications and you can show that this fading parameter which we have not defined here, we will do it later on in other module if we have time. But this fading parameter or the fading phenomena can be expressed as a random variable okay. At any given point your total input power will have the average power plus the fluctuations and these fluctuations because of the fading can actually be approximated by what is called as Rayleigh fading okay. and in some cases in what is called as Riesian fading okay. So, these are, quant these are topics that you know uh, course on wireless communications as in other NPTEL courses probably uh, can tell you more about it and you can also do nice models be, uh, beyond what we have done in the simple models. But our story is not complete yet because we have seen that when waves interact with buildings meaning that their wavelengths are essentially uh, of the same order or slightly higher order than the build, you know apertures that you are thinking of. You know you can think of the building as an aperture as an opening for the electromagnetic waves and then these waves would simply diffract from it. Okay. So, this phenomenon of diffraction or diffraction we will study it because it is very important not only for this channel modeling, but it is also important as a uh, example of the propagation of electromagnetic waves uh, through certain optical materials called mirrors, lenses and apertures. Okay. Thank you very much.